Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you're watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's video is very simple and it's really unscripted. What I wanna do is talk about the three motorcycles that I own to start off 2023. Give you a little tour of each bike, talk about why I've selected these three particular motorcycles for me to personally own and ride this year. And uh, then we'll get some input from you guys to see what you all think. Now, the first thing I need to do is move back into the garage because I set the camera up, it wasn't raining, and now it's drizzling pretty hard and I'm gonna get soaking wet out here doing this and the bikes are all wet. So let's get moved into the garage and then we can get this started. One, check one, check one, check one, check one, check two, check two. All right, we have retreated to the relative safety and dryness of my garage. So excuse the clutter, but we're gonna have to film this video in here. So as I go through this and kind of show you these bikes and talk about my reasoning, let me know down in the comments below. Do you agree with my choices? Disagree with my choices? What would you do differently? What do you think? You're not gonna hurt my feelings. You guys know that. I don't have loyalty to certain motorcycles or brands. I just don't. I really don't care about different brands. I don't have loyalties. I buy and sell things. I also wanna talk about that in today's video. So we'll get to that in a minute. Why do I buy and sell bikes a lot? Because some of you get kind of frustrated about that. So I wanna explain why I do that. So why don't we kind of start taking a tour of these bikes, talk about sort of my reasoning in choosing them. Also, you'll notice, yeah, I do have a Jeep. I have a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. If you wanna check out content on that kind of stuff, I do have another YouTube channel where I occasionally post that kind of stuff. It's called Big Rock Outdoors and I'll link that below. So let's get started with the bikes. Now, this is not my own motorcycle, but this is a project that you've been seeing on the channel. This is the Honda CRF 300L Rally. And to be perfectly honest, it's really not my thing. It's not something that I really wanna go out and ride very much for various reasons. And I'll get into that when I do the wrap up on this. Uh, I've turned the bike back to stock for the most part, getting it ready to go back to Honda in a few weeks because my six month review is about up. So more on that later, stay tuned. Let's talk about the big boy, the big R1250 GS. So there's a few reasons why I went back to this. Now, let me back up a second. So I bought an Africa Twin, I had the Norda 901, I had a KTM 890 Rally. So I change my mind all the time and I switch bikes. What basically happened, the short version of it, is that I had that 2021 uh, R1250 GS Adventure, the white one, which you saw content on my channel for a year or two with that bike. I love that bike, it was great, took some big long trips on it. I sold that bike and bought an Africa Twin to make videos with the Africa Twin. The Africa Twin Adventure Sports, amazing motorcycle, really great, I can't fault it. But it just didn't really excite me, it didn't really have a lot of power, it didn't really get me excited to go out and ride. And I really missed having a GS. There's just something about a modern GS that just does it for me. I mean, the utilitarian styling, the kind of looks, I like the boxer motor, I like how easy it is to maintain, I like that it doesn't tip over all the way, I like the sound and the torque of it, I just like that. I like the shaft drive on this bike, so the Africa Twin was a chain drive. I like the way the electronics work, they're very easy to use. This bike is fast, it has a lot of power, a lot of torque, it's super comfortable. There's just, I don't know, you've got an adjustable windshield there, Very. there's no wind buffeting. It's just a lot of stuff I like about it. I'll have to have separate videos about this. And also talking about, you know, why did I go back to a standard GS as opposed to a GS Adventure, which I had before? There's pros and cons to each. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. They're just very different. And I'm kind of, for now, I'm enjoying having the lighter, smaller, standard 1250GS as opposed to the GSA. So more content with this bike coming up. Um, you can see I've got different luggage. I'm testing different tires right now. I've got the Motaz GPS Adventure tires. I've got Alt-Rider stuff. I've got the foot pegs, skid plate. I've got Turretech crash bars. I've got a headlight guard, different, uh, you know, I've got the seat cover, which I always show. Moscow Moto luggage is what I'm using, but I'm also testing different luggage. So for luggage, you can see here, I kind of put these out. I am, I'm a gear junkie. I love testing and trying different gear, riding gear, parts, accessories, luggage. So I've got Lone Rider stuff that I'm testing. I've got SW Motec sent me their new Sysbag WP system. It's really kind of cool, quick release, waterproof. Really happy with that. Shad sent out their TR40 soft bags. These are a very affordable, more budget-friendly option for adventure bikes. I think that's gonna be a great review to show. And of course, my kind of standby favorite, which are my Moscow Moto Backcountry 35s, which um, currently I have those mounts here on the GS. All right, so I think we should move on to the Aprilia Touareg 660. So I've said this before in many of my videos, but I think mid-size adventure bikes are the sweet spot of the adventure bike world. They give you a lot more off-road ability, 
uh, agility handling, they're easier to pick up, they're easier to maneuver, they're less stressful to ride off-road than the big adventure bikes. So these mid-size ones I love. I've had the T7s, I've had the 890s, I've had the Nordens, I've had uh, all sorts of stuff. I had F800GS, I've had the, uh, what did I have before this? I guess the 890 Rally. Um, so I love this genre of bikes. Now I have a whole video series on this Twarg, which a lot of you have already seen, and that's on my channel. Right now, what I've been doing is, since we've been having a lot of snow and crappy weather, is getting some accessories fitted on the bike. So I've got SW Motec crash bars, SW Motec skid plate. That's a huge improvement because I actually already broke the stock skid plate. I've got black dog foot pegs there. I've got different luggage that I'm testing out. I'm going to be changing the seat. I've got flex bars and hand guards. I've got, you know, a lot of different stuff like that. Of course, as you always see, Motaz tires. This bike is a wonderful bike. In, it, in my opinion, it, ex, it exceeds the performance and capability of the Tenere 700 in every single aspect. But the downside is there's a more limited dealer network and you know parts can be a little bit harder to get sometimes. But other than that, if you live somewhere where there are dealers and you feel like you have support, this is an amazing motorcycle. Really, really like it. So I just did the first service on this bike. I did the 600 mile oil change. Um, did some other things like that with the first service, but I have to take it in. So I'm making a video about this, actually this first service experience. I'm taking it into the dealer actually in a few days to have the computer reflash and reset for the service, but also there's a new fuel programming they have to put in. I'm also having the dealership put on the OEM Aprilia heated grips and also install the quick shifter. So I'm just being lazy and having them do that because I just don't feel like tearing into the bike to do that stuff. So I'm paying an arm and a leg for their labor to have that done, but I'll have a whole video showing that experience. It's kind of a bummer because I have to drive 100 miles one way to get to the dealer, so it's an all-day thing for me. Go to the dealer, they're gonna work on the bike for four hours, I'd have to drive another two or three hours to get home through traffic, so it's an eight or eight to 10 hour day for me to do that. So that's kind of one of the downsides of that. I wish you could kind of reset the service and do more home maintenance on this bike, but this is how most motorcycles are. So let me briefly talk about why do I have both of these? So why would you have a midsize adventure bike that can do everything like that? Why do you still need a 1250 or a big adventure bike? Well, you don't need that. This is nothing about need. This is just to do with a want, right? I mean, I'm spoiled, I admit it. And this is what I like for longer trips, long touring rides with mostly street, mostly road riding. But you'll be surprised what these big GSs will do off-road. I have talked about this and sort of how I think these bikes, you know, do off-road and what the limitations are, but you'd be very surprised what this can do off-road. And for a long touring trip with the shaft drive and the comfort and the big torquey engine and just how it goes down the highway at high speeds, it's incredible. And I'm very lucky to have it. I don't know if I'm going to keep it long term. I, I just don't know. Um, but... I love having it, I'm lucky to have it for now, and I do have some long trips planned for it this coming summer. So the way these fit together is that's more like long touring trips with mostly road, kind of works as a touring and a sport touring bike as well, so I don't have to own one of those. This is more of a 50-50 bike or mostly off-road adventure bike for those hardcore off-road trips with some highway. It can do everything, but it's not as good as a touring bike, obviously, as a GS, but for off-road, this is way, way better. All right, now, before I jump into the KTM 350, I just wanna address something really quick. A lot of you get frustrated when I purchase a bike, say how good it is, and then I end up selling it. So it's a good question, and there's a couple things going on there. One is that reviewing different motorcycles and making content, I've decided to make this my job. And because of that, I have to have fresh content. I have to have new bikes to show. If I keep a bike for five years and make videos about only one motorcycle for five years, I will not have a successful YouTube channel that allows me to make a living. So I just can't do that from a business point of view. Now I can have a bike a year, maybe six months, something like that, do a bunch of content with it, but the idea that I'm gonna own a bike for five or 10 years is really not very realistic or a good approach for my business. Now that conflicts sometimes with my desire to keep a bike. Sometimes there's a motorcycle that comes around, the 890 Rally would be an, an example of that, that I really don't wanna give up. But because of the demands of making content, which I don't expect you all to understand because it's my job and not yours, just like I don't understand how your job works either, that's okay, but because of the demands of that, I have to buy and sell things. So I sold the 890 Rally, not because I didn't like the bike, I love that bike, and everything I said in the videos is true. 
But I had to buy the Touareg because I felt that it was a new model that deserved attention. And, uh, you know, on my channel, I like to buy bikes for long-term review. And the only way that's financially possible is if sometimes I sell something to get some resources to buy a new bike. I don't have an unlimited budget, obviously. So those are some of the reasons. The second reason I buy and sell bikes sometimes is I just get bored. And that's just the way I am. Uh, a lot of times I buy my motorcycles used, like this GS I bought used, my KTM I bought used. And because of that, I'm usually able to sell them if I did a good job buying it for almost what I paid for them. So I don't lose too much money doing that. Of course, that can depend on sort of how good of a job you do buying and selling stuff, which is a whole nother topic. So those are some of the reasons why I hope that makes sense. I'm not a normal person who is gonna buy a bike and keep it for a long time. Uh, it's just not the reality of making YouTube content. It's not how this business works. Although there are times, like I mentioned, when I really would prefer to keep a bike long term just because it's something that fits me very, very well. All right, let's cover this absolutely incredible incredible KTM. So uh, the background on this bike, I've always owned dual sport bikes. I like to have a smaller bike for enduro, for off-road, single track, more hardcore off-road riding. This is the kind of bike that I'm gonna stick in the trailer or the back of my truck and usually ride somewhere to ride, unless I'm riding just around the mountains, kind of right around my house. It's not designed for highway travel. It's not designed for touring. This is a dirt bike, which it's an EXC, so it has a license plate or street legal, which I have to have, because here in California we don't, we hardly have any riding areas uh, for bikes or vehicles that are not street legal with a license plate. So I always have bikes that have a license plate, as opposed to having like a green or a red sticker dirt bike. So some of you may have seen on my channel, I had a Beta before this. I wanted to try the Beta. The Beta was an incredible bike, really, really enjoyed it. No real complaints about it, but I wanted to sort of upgrade to one of the newer KTM. So this is the current generation EXC, all the latest technology with the frame and the suspension and the engine and everything like that. I've had 500 EXCs before. They've been incredible bikes, really love them. But this time around, once I sold my Beta, I really wanted to try a 350. The 350s, from what everything I had read, they handle a little better, they feel a little bit more agile, the power delivery is a bit different, and I really wanted to try this and test this out, and of course, be able to review it in a long-term way on the channel here, which I'm gonna be doing soon. There's gonna be a full video coming out about this bike uh, in the next few weeks, once I once I can get a decent weather, uh, weather window here to film it. So this motorcycle is ridiculously built up. It is the most, expensive most over-the-top dual sport bike I've ever owned it's just I don't even deserve it it's so good it's got everything done to it it's the suspension has been professionally um, valved and sprung for my weight uh, I've got all the aftermarket stuff you can do and most of the stuff came with the bike so I bought this bike used from a guy who bought the bike had almost all the work done to it at great expense Rode it, he had about 300 miles on it only. Then he decided he only wanted to ride his motocross bikes. He didn't like trail riding. So he put this for sale and I swooped in and got it. It was one of those things where I had to move really fast because it was gonna sell like within a day uh, at the price he had put for it. So just to give you reference, I'm gonna show this in the video that I'm making, but the, he paid $18,000 for this bike because of all the suspension work, all the aftermarket stuff. That's what, I have the invoice for $18,000 that he paid to the dealership to get this bike the way it is. And I've even added stuff on top of that. That's ridiculous. It's excessive. I totally admit that. Now, I didn't pay anywhere near $18,000. I think I paid around $12,000 for the bike, which was a screaming deal because to buy a stock one of these out the door in California where I live is like thirteen dollars or $14,000 for a bone stock bike. So when I say it has everything, I really do mean it. I've got an Athena Get ECU with a map switch, which totally changes the fueling and the fuel mapping, makes it run smooth. I've got a Scott Stamper. I put the seat concept seat. I've got Moscow Moto luggage. Thank you, Moscow Moto. I've got FMF exhaust. I've got good tires. I've got protection. I've got armor, skid plates, uh, head, uh, pipe guards. The suspension's been professionally done. Uh, you can see here Three Brothers uh, Suspension. That's a shop here we have in Southern California. Baja Designs Headlight. I've got these cool, I don't even know, sick-ass uh, handguards with integrated turn signals. I mean, I don't deserve this, you guys. This thing is crazy nice and uh, I don't even know what to say. And now how it rides, I mean, it's incredible. The suspension is incredible, the fueling is incredible, the motor's incredible. It has the power almost of a 450 or a 500, 
but it's super light. This thing only weighs 250 pounds fully fueled up, which is insane. That's 200 pounds less than that and 300 pounds less than my GS. So obviously it's a totally different experience. And as you can see behind here, I'm a mountain bike guy. So I appreciate the lighter weight and getting on some of those smaller trails. So stay tuned for more content with this bike, talking through everything it has and kind of how do you justify such a premium dual sport when you can go buy a used DRZ for three or four grand that basically does the same thing. So we'll be talking about that in future videos. So let me know what you all think of this combination of bikes. In my opinion, from all my collective experience of doing this over the years, having a large adventure bike, which can do touring and sport touring riding and all that kind of stuff, having a midweight adventure bike to do, you know, well, everything, and then having a dual sport bike. When you have those three bikes, you can do 90% of the riding out there. Now, there's a couple aspects that I'm missing out. What about a sport bike? right? What about going to the track? And then what about the other extreme? What about a motocross, a pure dirt bike or trials riding? So you will be you will be totally impressed, I think, with some of the content I have coming up this year in 2023. Some really big surprises for you guys. I'm going to become a sport bike rider. I'm going to the track. I'm going to the California Superbike School. I'm probably buying a sport bike and getting into some of that. And on the other end, I'm going to do motocross and trials riding as well. And I'm going to take you guys along for the ride to show you kind of how the experience is of learning those sort of extreme segments of riding as somebody my whole life who's basically just ridden dual sport and adventure bikes and done some sport touring. So again, let me know what you all think down in the comments below. Would these three bikes be your choice? What other choices would you have? Also, I'm really curious about your input into what motorcycles do you think I should buy or test in the coming uh, year? Do you want me to sell the GS and maybe get a Tiger 1200 Rally? I'd be willing to do that. Do you want me to sell the GS and maybe get a KTM 1290? So think about the segment. So like a big adventure bike, what would you like me to test? Midweight adventure bike. Once I'm kind of done with a Touareg in six months or a year, even though I don't want to sell it because I think it's the best mid-weight adventure bike. What else would you like me to test? Do you want me to get a Desert X? And in terms of dual sport bikes, maybe I need to do some more affordable dual sport bikes like a KLX 300 or something like that to show a bike that more people can actually afford. So I'm open to your ideas. Your input's really valuable to me and I really do listen to that. So in wrapping this up, I apologize for having to kind of get inside here in the garage where it's a little bit cluttered and the lighting may not be perfect, but it's raining. That's what we had to do. Thank you for hanging in there. If you've watched this whole video, I appreciate it. Um, again, comment down below. Let me know what you all think about this. Other than that, you can support the channel. There's ways to do that down below. Uh, please ride safe and I'll see you out there and I'll see you on the next video.